It is incredibly windy today, so I'm hiding in the garage with all the landlord's tools and bits and pieces. Just before we look at today's Psalm, Psalm 88, I wanna tell you something that happened today. Now, I've said before, if you see the cap, that means I've been out busking, and uh, I went to the wonderful, uh, beautiful town of Thames on our Coromandel Peninsula here in New Zealand. It's about an hour and 20 minutes away from here. It was a bit of a drive. Why did I go there? I felt like I needed to go there. I was tempted to go somewhere else to Whangamata, which is another beautiful little town, but I went to Thames. So, I bust at Thames for four and a half hours. It was great, it was fun, and near the end, somebody came up that needed a Christian ear to listen to him. Isn't that wonderful? And the thing is that he knew who I was, but he didn't know who I was because of my social media posts. He didn't know who I was because of my work with Know My Faith or with Promise Keepers or from pastoring the church for 10 years or from working on Christian radio for nearly two decades. He knew me from Youth for Christ days in the 1970s in Dunedin. We'd never met, but but he knew who I was. And God sent me to Thames, not to sing for four and a half hours, but to be an ear to listen. Don't you love that? I love when God does that. Anyway, here's Psalm 88, a song, a Psalm of the sons of Korah for the leader, set to sickness that causes suffering, a mascal of Hyman the Ezraki. Adonai, God of my salvation, when I cry out to you in the night, let my prayer come before you. Turn your ear to my cry for help. For I am oversupplied with troubles, which have brought me to the brink of Sheol. I am counted among those going down to the pit, like a man who is beyond help, left by myself among the dead, like the slain who lie in the grave. You no longer remember them. They're cut off from your care. You plunged me into the bottom of the pit, into dark places, into the depths. Your wrath lies heavily on me. Your waves crashing over me keep me down. You separated me from my close friends, made me repulsive to them. I am caged in with no escape. My eyes grow dim from suffering. I call on you, Adonai, every day. I spread out my hands to you. Will you perform wonders for the dead? Can the ghosts of the dead rise up and praise you? Will your grace be declared in the grave or your faithfulness in Abaddon? Will your wonders be known in the dark or your righteousness in the land of oblivion? But I cry out to you, Adonai. My prayer comes before you in the morning. So why, Adonai, do you reject me? Why do you hide your face from me? Since my youth, I have been miserable, close to death. I am numb from bearing these terrors of yours. Your fierce anger has overwhelmed me. Your terrors have shriveled me up. They surge around me all day like a flood. From all sides they close in on me. You have made friends and companions shun me. The people I know are hidden from me. Wow. There's, there's, nothing, there's nothing positive in that at all. There's, it's, I mean, no wonder it's set to sickness that causes suffering. Um, I, I obviously, Haiman, the Ezraki, was going through some very, very bad stuff when he wrote this. And you could throw in some little platitudes and say, well, it's really encouraging to know that people in the Bible go through bad stuff. But when you're going through the bad stuff, I'm calling on you, Adonai, every day. I'll spread my hands out to you. Where are you? It hurts. It hurts when you're going through bad stuff. And, you know, I just think of Job and his three friends. They sat there to start with and didn't say anything. They just sat with him. Sometimes when you have a friend going through something like this, you just need to be there with them and be a listening ear and not a talking tongue. Anyway, that's what I get from Psalm 88. God bless you. See you tomorrow for Psalm 89.